Yo, 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 you made it. It's your favorite comic on the rise, Melvin Williams, and you are officially tuned into the Comedy Chatter Podcast. And you've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy, as well as kicking with today's nationally touring and headlining comedians, and this is the podcast for you. What's good, good people? How y'all doing, man? Thank y'all for tuning in to the one and only Comedy Chatter Podcast featuring Melvin Williams. That is me, in case you did not know. Thank y'all so much for tuning in, man, once again. Uh, I got a lot of love from the last pod I dropped uh, featuring the one and only Dean Edwards, Saturday Night Live alum. He uh, came in through me on our comedy showcase at Grace the Stage, man, uh, gave me a few ticks, allowed me to, um, you know, do a do a nice little interview with him, man. And, uh, you know, we uh, went ahead and I did a podcast that was like an open and inaugural podcast. I got a lot of love from it, man. A lot of people saying that they enjoyed the stuff that I was talking about. As well as uh, you know, having somebody um, as um, informative and uh, you know as experienced as uh, Dean Edwards, and so uh, it was a beautiful thing, man. So glad he did that, man. Shouts out to Dean Edwards. Uh, continue to listen to his podcast, man, as much as you can. Uh, but for the Muffin Protocol, he's got it all over on uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, all that stuff, man. Y'all make sure y'all tune in. But uh, yeah, thank y'all. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get this one popping off just like Dean has his. You know, I want people to, you know, um, say, hey, man, you heard that Comedy Chatter podcast the other night, man. You heard that? Yeah, I downloaded it, man. I listened to it on a plane, man. I listened to it wherever I'm going. That's what I'm trying to get. You know, like, you can you can hear a comedian on stage, but, you know, for the most you know part, on stage, we're performing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like some of that stuff is a little, you know, sensationalized, if you will. Yeah, I see some black people in here. I see y'all. Yeah. Hey, black people, aren't y'all happy y'all still free? We thought some shit was going to go down with Trump, didn't we? We thought we was in trouble. I mean, now he got elected. I was like, oh, shit. I thought the next day we was going to be back in flavor. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, I didn't hear my cry. Shit, I thought we was in trouble. Shout out to uh, Roger Feeney, uh, the, the cat that uh, runs the Ann Comedy Showcase. Man, guy, first guy to put me on stage. Uh, he grants me access to uh, talk to these comedians on a, on a weekly basis. You know, he's got to, you know, uh, put on put on a show and book these comedians in his club. And hey, I thought it'd be a great idea to you know come on and um, you know interview these guys and uh, do a podcast on it. So that's that's kind of where, where that is. Shout out to him. Uh, also, a shout out to my sound guy, Mister David Pittman, the only guy that believed in my in my vision, believed in my idea of trying to put this podcast together. So he's the sound guy. He helps me edit everything together. He uh, helps me record. He helps me, you know, make the magic happen, basically. So shout out to those two. Back in the day sponsor. Back in the day sponsor. Y'all know how I do. I, I, I pick an old store, some some place that's, that's, that's um, you know, closed down now. So, you know, and, and basically say they're my sponsor. Uh, so basically we can just kind of go down memory lane. We can laugh about it. Uh, but also, see, I can say they're my sponsor because they closed down now, so they can't sue me. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the reason why I do that. Uh, so let's see. Back in the day, sponsor uh, Merry Go Round. That's 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 gonna be it. Remember Merry Go Round? Does anybody remember? You can't, y'all don't remember Merry Go Round? Oh man, that was the spot in the mall. Like when I was coming up in the nineties, like when I was in high school, like Merry Go Round. You wanted, you had to go to Merry Go Round when you hit the mall. This was like the hippest like little spot. Like they had like the hammer pants. And they had like all the hip hop clothes and they had like the badass suits. I'm like I man, I used to like work. I, I had a job at uh the movie theater, like back in the day. And I love movies. So I was like, hey, why don't I just work at the movie theater? I can go for free, eat free popcorn. And I used to get paid every Friday, man. And as soon as I got paid, man, I would catch the bus right to the mall and go straight to Merry Go Around and spend my whole freaking check. I used to buy all the cross colors. Remember cross colors? Like, oh, I used to have all that shit, man. I, I, I used to be, I used to come to school like crispy. I used to come to school crispy as fuck. They'd be like, man, man what the they, they, they thought, at one point, they thought I was like slanging the dope. You know what I'm saying? They was like, man, you, you, you slanging? I was like, nah, bro, I work. I got a job, man. <laughs> that's where that's where all like the that's where all the like dope boys was going. The dope boys the dope boys would go to merry go round to get the outfit right off the mannequin. They'd be like, yeah, give me that right there in the in the window, and they'd just take the 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 mannequin be naked because they 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 took the motherfucking you know what I'm saying. They took the outfit off the mannequin and walked out with it. Went down to Foot Locker, got them some new shoes, and they just oh man, I'm telling you, 
That's I grew up in Ann Arbor too, so I know a lot of people kind of like, "Wow, really? Y'all had Doughboy?" Yes, yes. Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor wasn't. It ain't all U of M and 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 Guns and Roses and shit. Like, no, it has some. We had some gulliness to Ann, <laughs> to Ann Arbor, but but yeah, man. So that's 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 the uh, the podcast sponsor for, for this for this uh, go round merry go round. If y'all can't remember merry go round, dog, just Google it, man. I'm telling you, that was the that was the hippest spot ever back in the day, man. Yeah. So you know, I I, I um got a chance to um watch uh, my man uh, Roy Wood Jr.'s comedy special recently uh father figure hopefully you guys got a chance to see it man hilarious all right first of all it was funny he uh recorded it in atlanta uh you know kind of where i live uh he's from birmingham but um yeah he decided to do it in atlanta georgia man and uh, yeah it was it was hilarious i watched it on comedy central i you know kind of you know, had my sister record it for me and got a chance to check it out rewind it and all of that and the other one i wanted to look at another you know part so i dissected it and Roy Wood Jr. is a funny cat. I've been seeing him come along. You know, he's doing the stuff for Comedy Central now. And but I've been seeing him. I used to listen to his prank calls on on on, uh, on his little website and you know on uh, Pandora. That's where I got hooked to him on Pandora. But he's a funny cat, man. And uh, his special was good. And uh, a funny thing happened right before his special. They played. They 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 were they were prepping for his special. Comedy Central was prepping, like kind of you know gearing up for his special. So they were playing all kind of other specials, you know. So they played Kevin Hart laughing my pain. They played um, what was the other one they played? I think they played Chris Rock, uh, bigger and blacker, or you know they they played a whole bunch of specials, and it uh, they messed around and played what I think is my opinion now. What I think is the greatest stand-up comedy special of all time. And that was Richard Pryor's live in concert. It was like the first, like probably the first time they decided, I don't know if anybody can check me on this, but the first time they decided to like just go ahead and and record, you know what I'm saying, a special. I mean, a a comedy, you know, concert, basically. That's what they called them back then, a comedy concert. You see, what I thought was interesting was I watched it, and, you know, I'm watching it with fresh eyes. Now, I used to to watch this when I was young. (laughs) Like, Richard Pryor's been my dude forever. When I was was in high school and, you know, maybe even, like, eighth grade even, like, I I was studying Richard. I I used to love uh, this where he had to, you know, go check it out. Live in concert, he had the red shirt on, real sweaty red shirt, and the blue, uh, slack bell bottoms and the gold shoes with the little afro and it, man and he i'm talking about from start to finish this cat richard Pryor ripped it on this night he, he was he was on fire there's some of the best bits like bits that still held up i watched it the other night and the bits still held up man it was just 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 funny everybody just you know talking about eddie murphy delirious and all that eddie even says hey man i got all of those ideas delirious and raw and all that from watching Richard Pryor's live in concert. So that is the one. And so it got me to, you know, just kind of thinking, man, uh, you know, like a special, like, you know, what does that entail today? You know what I mean? Because to be totally honest with you, man, hey, with with with, with Netflix as hot as it is right now, hey, they dropping specials like cars. Like, aren't they? Like, you know what I mean? Every time I look up, somebody's doing a new special. Like Bill Burr. He's got one on Netflix. I think Sed's dropped one recently. Uh, Aziz Asani, Asani, if I'm pronouncing his uh, Aziz Asani, uh, if I'm doing his name correctly. I mean, people just dropping specials. I heard that Chris Rock had already signed on for Netflix for uh, two specials, and then Dave Chappelle had already signed on for three. So, <laughs> like, you know, it just kind of begs, like, what, 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 you know, what entails a special nowadays? Is a special just? Hey man, I'm you know I feel that I can do 45 minutes now, so I'm gonna do a special. You know I'm gonna do a comedy special and put it on DVD and you know sell it. Is that a special now, or you know is a special like you know that's, 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 I'm more of a question than anything. Like it's more a question. So you know I, I you know, I have my own opinion, of course. I think that a special is not. Um, just you saying, hey, man, you know what? You know, I got, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of comedy. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of, you know, record this and, you know, get the lighting and the fixing and the fixtures and all that stuff right. And I'm going to wear me a, you know, a leather suit or whatever it is I want to wear, something memorable, of course, and then go out here and record, you know, my my set tonight and then put it on DVD and, and give it to, you know, Cold Black and then let them distribute it. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, that doesn't, that that's not a special, a special to me is more so what my man Chris Rock does. Now, Chris Rock puts together specials. Like you don't hear from Chris Rock until Chris Rock thinks that his shit that he about to put out is a, is special. Like that's that's what I think the word is. Like if you just about to put out a comedy, you know, DVD, then just call it that. But when y'all saying, "Hey man, we about to do these, these specials, a comedy special," like that, it needs to be special. You know what I mean? Chris Rock will stay, you know, he sat on like, you know, bigger and blacker and, you know, bring the pain. Like he came with some specials, bro. Like he, he, Chris Rock, I've heard stories of where uh, he starts all the way from ground zero. Like he'll, 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 he'll write, you know, put some stuff together. And then he'll just show up at random comedy clubs and try his stuff out, you know, straight. Like I'm talking about not, you know, not nothing big, he's like small comedy clubs. Like he'll just blow everybody's mind and come into a, you know, a hundred seater, you know, one night and just like do some new stuff. Um, I heard that he used to um, try out his material at uh, senior citizen homes. Like, you know, he'll go to elderly, like senior citizen homes and just go in there and, you know, try to make those people laugh. You know, if he can make them laugh, he feels, hey, man, that's probably the toughest crowd ever. If I could make them laugh. I could make any damn body laugh. So uh, this dude, like before you see the HBO special, and we'll get into HBO in a second, before you see that special, <laughs> from what from you know that's that's been two years into the making you know what i mean like he's he's been going from place to place like small clubs then you know bigger venues and theaters and then he finally hits the big you know stage and then you know puts all that together and creates a special uh but yeah man <laughs> that that's my take on, on on a special um but yeah netflix has sort of changed the game man netflix is like the coveted from what it seems like, Netflix is the coveted, hey, man, I want to give you a comedy special and stream it, whereas HBO used to be. Remember, remember HBO was the, that was it. Like, if you, got, if you got on HBO, man, and did comedy, then that shit was considered big. When Def Jam came out, let me tell you how big Def Jam was. Def Jam came out on HBO first, first night, first evening that it first dropped. I think it was maybe 1990, It drops... Half an hour, people came on there. Seven minutes, they you know seven seven minutes of comedy. They probably did seven minutes with Martin, of course, being the host that he was. And the it came on at twelve midnight on on Friday nights. And by Saturday morning, you was damn near a star. Like that's how that's how if your set was hot on Def Comedy Jam HBO, then it was hot. Like it pretty much started, like or not not started, but it pretty much you know put urban comedy on the freaking map in terms of all the the, the the amazing comedians that he used to bring out. And then people start getting HBO specials. And that's when it, the shit just kind of went through the roof. And yeah, now, hey, HBO specials, you know, if you if you get one, I'm not saying the small potatoes, but shit, Netflix done took over. Netflix paying people 20 million right now. 20 million bucks. Chris Rock's getting 20 million a special for the next two that he's going to do. Dave Chappelle's getting 20 million for the next three he's gonna do so yeah man like that's that shit is that shit is huge right now and you know uh my take is you know if we if, if these comedians are you know getting this kind of money and doing you know doing co- what you know quote-unquote comedy specials then hey make it special that's all i'm saying don't don't just don't just be in a comedy club one night and you headlining and you like hey man i'm about to do 50 minutes of here tonight somebody record it and then after that, be like, hell, so let's go ahead and take this to a distributor. This is going to be my comedy special. No, this is, just a, this is just a night that you did, you know, you headlined, you know. But, yeah, put, give, give, us, give us some shit that you've been working on for a minute. Make it, make it special is all, I'm, is, all I'm, is all I'm saying. And, hey, shit, who, 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 who am I? You know what I'm saying? My opinion, it's, it's, it's something like comedy veteran right now that's probably doing that, <laughs> probably working on that comedy special right now. That they that they did it at the motherfucking uh, Denver Improv, and they like shit, man. Who the fuck is this? Who are he talking about? He ain't nobody. You're right. You're absolutely right. I ain't shit. I ain't nobody. 
I'm just some dude that's doing a podcast, man, been doing stand-up for about nine years. But I'll tell you this. I loved I loved the shit. I love the, the, the sport of stand up. I love everything about it. I love the process. And that's the reason why I uh, you know feel that, you know, in doing this podcast, you know, I can give my opinion. You know, you can agree with it or disagree with it. But hey, my opinion is that. Like make make it special. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Comedy Chatter Podcast. I'm your host, Meldon Williams, and I'm here with my man. I've been trying my best to uh, get with him for a while, but I finally got him, Mr. Andy Beningo. How's it going, sir? Dude, it's good to catch up with you. Good to finally be able to meet up, man. Yes, yes. Thanks yes, for man. having me on. Hey, of course, man. You're a busy guy, a busy guy. But of course, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, I know you got the, the youngsters now, too. So yeah. I was, uh, one, of, one of them snuck in on me. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how is it being a parent? That's the first place I got to start. Yeah, man. At, at first, I was terrified of it, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, as a young dude, especially traveling, and being a comic, you're like, oh, you're just you're on the road. You don't really have any responsibilities. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, I've got this life form. I have to, exactly. you know, provide exactly. for. But um, exactly. nothing is greater than having your kids go, daddy, when you come home. So exactly. that's, dude, it's seriously the greatest thing ever. Top stand up like yeah. a million times. I know it's kind of hard to say, but no, I mean, no, it really I understand. Is, man. It's, yeah, it's there's, the there's, there's certain things that, you know, we, we all love stand up and everything, but hey, there's certain things that, you know, when it comes, especially, you know, uh, raising kids and things yeah. of that nature, hey, I told Totally gives, I understand. Yeah, and it definitely gives you a lot of material, too. It's <laughs> awesome. You know, just hanging out with them. They're always saying and doing funny things. So, it, it, you know, it's it's like they always say, like, it's like for a while I was just in comedy mode and didn't really have much of a life besides stand-up. And I remember I was working in uh, Kentucky, and this comic, Kristen Key, who's she's absolutely hilarious. And I remember she was like, when was the last time you went out to dinner with your friends? And I was like, oh, me and my comic buddies. She's like, no, no, not your comic buddies. Your, your real life friends. <laughs> exactly. When, when did you you're go like, You're like, what are those? Yeah, and I was like, wait. <laughs> and so she kind of opened up my eyes like, oh, you need, you know, you really do need like a life to, to tra- you know, to make it relatable into comedy. So exactly. that was really the best advice I ever got was just go live life and, material will follow you and that's kind of what it is with the kids i mean i didn't have kids just for the material (laughs) of course but obviously it's like you know it definitely helps oh i'm sure i'm sure it does now i know you to be a huge hockey fan oh yeah so uh yeah uh i think we've uh, spoke about this before i hooked up with you before we were uh, talking russell rab uh, oh yeah got got my favorite yeah a friend of ours and so um you know me we're big hoops fans myself Mm -hmm. and russ and so everything i do pretty much is uh i don't want to say everything but just kind of predicated off of basketball Ball. Yeah. So I usually uh, ask this question to all the comics that I sit down with, and I just kind of let them know. And you can answer it any way they can, yeah. even if they don't have a question. Even if they don't have an answer for it, mm-hmm. it's kind of, you know, you go in the direction that you want to go. But um, these uh, three basketball players are different, um, different um, – they're different, I guess, um, you know, decades. Mm-hmm. Decades or uh, generations in terms of ball. So I want to know who you would pick. I got oh. Michael Jordan. Okay. I got Kobe Bryant. Okay. And I got LeBron James. So which direction do you go if I give you those? See, it's funny because I'm like, I know nothing about basketball. Like, <laughs> okay. Like, like okay. when we used to play in middle school, my nickname was literally <laughs> Airball Andy. Like I was just like the worst ever. <laughs> okay. So I never really followed basketball. But mm-hmm. I mean, obviously those three guys, I mean, Jordan, everybody loves Jordan. Yes. Kobe is phenomenal. And yes. then LeBron is, what was it, five or six championships yeah. in a row or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, 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 in, right? he's in six, he's, in, he's been to six straight finals. See, and this year, yeah. if he gets there, that'll be seven. So that's just unbelievable. Right. So, like, when I was yeah. a kid, I never really watched basketball, but I've been able to watch LeBron a little bit. And I, so yeah. I would probably say LeBron. Okay. So, yeah, only, a LeBron uh, guy. And, again, I don't know anything about basketball, but just yeah, yeah, how yeah. dominant that guy has been. Yes. So it's, that's it's probably been, who I would pick. It's but been unbelievable. I, I think the obvious choice, too, is Jordan, too. Yes. It's that been guy unbelievable. Was, there's nobody like him. And they, yeah, they consider him, Kobe, they I consider mean, him the greatest. Yeah. yeah, and he's got, I think, more points than Jordan, doesn't Kobe? Yeah, you know, yeah. he passed so. Jordan up right before he left. Yep. So, hey, this this yeah, hey. It's tough question. There's, there's, there's no wrong answer. I got to go with yeah. LeBron, probably. Okay, yeah. got you. There's no yep. wrong answer. So, like you said, <laughs> that you're not really a hoops fan. I knew that, uh, you know, hockey is your right. thing. Yep. How yep. long have you been like into uh, hockey and the red well, wings and all of those? Yeah, I mean, pretty much forever. I mean, I, we grew up spoiled because 
when I was a kid, that's when they started going to the finals and winning 62 games and then yeah. championships. So I've, like, probably 93, 92. Okay. So okay. when I was, like, six or seven, I, I you know, huge fan of them. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they missed the playoffs this year. I was just about but, to ask you. That was my next question. How hard is it now that they're just – I mean, I, when, I was growing up, when I was growing up, it was just the Wings and everybody else. Right, right, <laughs> and right. now was, they're starting to struggle a little yeah, bit. How's that? If they lost, it would be like, oh, well, what did they do wrong <laughs> yeah, that they – you know, because – they're for a long time just unbeatable, but yeah. I mean, I, I can't remember twenty five or twenty six straight playoff. Yeah. I mean, in yeah. any sport, that's yeah. insane. That's, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then they, a lot of people said they were going to not make the playoffs when they did the uh, salary cap era, mm-hmm. starting in two thousand five, and we we're actually the last team to miss the playoffs wow. since it's been there ten or twelve years. So I mean, even that by itself is an accomplishment. So yeah. I mean, it's a rough year, but I don't think those guys have anything to be ashamed of. It's such a you know model franchise for so many years. You know, exactly. I don't think so either and you know I'm a, a huge Bulls fan when it comes mm-hmm. to uh, uh, NBA and yeah I, they say oh man your Bulls stink now your Bulls stink I say well hey I mean we have Michael we have six championships yeah. let's, let's let somebody else get in there yeah, it's, I mean it's tough once you're at the, the top it's only you know unfortunately you got gravity yeah. it's going to play down yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know like way the to Bulls go. and the Wings I have a feeling eventually they're going to yeah. they're going to come back yeah, up yeah. So. Always, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. alright so we spoke about this a little earlier man uh, I know you uh Comedy takes you all over. So recently, uh, Miami, oh. and then hey, the whole what well, we call it the Miami fiasco. Yeah, you were trying yeah. to man. I saw it on Facebook and I couldn't believe it because you know, you know, I know you know Michigan is another one. You said you were in Miami, yeah. couldn't get back, and you had to drive from Miami yeah. to Michigan. Tell it, me, oh, tell me yeah, about it. Yeah, it was brutal because I'm usually impatient when it comes to flights. So anything like an after an hour delay, I'm kind of like mad anyways. Yeah, yeah. So the flight got delayed like four hours, and I kept hearing people kind of mu- like murmuring in the corner. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> that's kinda, always yeah, funny. So it's kind of like, well, what's going on? And there was a guy who had been at, it was Sunday, mm-hmm. and there was a guy who had been at the airport since Thursday oh. trying to get a flight to Michigan. Oh my god! He had five different tickets trying to just, and not even to Detroit. It was like, let's go to Anywhere. Orlando <laughs> and up, or let's go to Fort Lauderdale, or Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. Every single connection was either booked or delayed or canceled. Oh. I was reading online that I guess Delta did like 3,500 flights they canceled or something like that. Yeah. So my flight was supposed to be at 2, and it kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed until midnight. Mm. And then eventually they were like, well, we don't have a flight crew, but 8 a.m. We will have, it was 8 a.m. We're definitely going to take we're off. We're going, yeah. So I slept overnight at the airport just like, <laughs> like a homeless person. Like, hey, it's just like, I did that. <laughs> yeah, and it, so it's kind of like, all right. But then you're thinking like, all right, cool. I'll just sleep on the plane the next morning, whatever. Mm-hmm. So right at about 6.30, the flight gets delayed again, and people are, like, getting mad, throwing oh, stuff. Yeah, now they're upset. Mm-hmm. So they're like, yeah, we don't have a flight crew again. And so people are like, are we going to fly out today? And there's like, we don't have an answer. And I go, well, what's the next available the flight after, sun, you know, Sunday or, you know, Sunday night or whatever? And they go, well, the next available flight is Wednesday night. Oh. So, if, But they're like, we're confident this flight's going to go out. <laughs> And I was, you know, once they delayed it, I was kind of like, all right, let's see if I can get a rental car. Mm-hmm. Managed to squeeze out one rental car. I mean, it cost, you know, like 300 bucks oh, to rent, yeah, which yeah, is like yeah. a flight. Mm-hmm. But the pilot was basically like, if you can find a way out of Miami, just find a way yeah, to get out. Yeah, get out. So I just busted it out. It was like 20-hour drive or something like that. And, wow. Uh, like, normally I would have stopped, but I was so pissed <laughs> that yeah, it just yeah, kind of yeah, fueled yeah. me that the was, entire drive. Yeah, you know? that, was my, <laughs> that was my next question. What um, fuels a, a, a drive that long? Man, are you podcasting? Are you listening to music? <laughs> are you talking on the phone? Like, that's a long drive. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. The, the Wings were playing their last game at the Joe. Oh, so you had, you had the, the you know, a couple hours before the game, the game, and then a couple hours after the game. Mm-hmm. And then just griping with other comics. Like, are you, are you trying to fly out? <laughs> yeah, me too. This is the worst yeah so then eventually you get to you know like 12 or something at night and but then you're like oh well all my buddies on the west coast it's only nine there oh okay <laughs> so then you got like three yeah. hours to call those guys and then yeah. yeah eventually i made it and just stopped a couple of times at a rust area just to kind of crash for 20 mm-hmm. you know an hour or something like yeah, that rub your eyes yeah but, <laughs> but it was um you know, I don't know. Hopefully, everything gets straightened out. I just feel bad because, like I said, there's like kids crying and like grown yeah. adults crying. They're stranded there. You oh know? my and, god! Um, oh. 
It was my son's first birthday, so I missed my son's first birthday. Oh party my god! Because I thought, oh, I'll be home a <laughs> day be and home a half for it. Yeah. And so, oh my goodness! I mean, the family's sweet because they're like, he won't remember, but I'm like, I'm always gonna remember. You're gonna remember. Like, but I mean, yeah. it's like there's nothing you can do in that situation. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, unfortunately, so, I've I've been there. I know, yeah. like I said, I'm kind of in the airline industry myself, yeah, and right, man, I right. understand totally when it comes to you. Just don't know what to tell those people, mm-hmm. like you said. Just hopefully, it's some way that they can, you know, yeah. make it home or somewhere they. And you know, and but I guarantee you, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, uh, you know, kind of re, you know, compensate them. You know, can't 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 give it back. Can't give back a son's first birthday. Yeah, but uh, hopefully there's something I, that they can. I do. mean, it was weird because I, it was actually a company that I was working for. They set up all the flights, you know. So I don't. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they just kind of work it all out. But yeah. yeah, I mean, like, but I mean, like I said, hopefully the people that are stranded there, they do something. I mean, yeah. they were trying to do stuff nice where they're like. There's a meal voucher, and people Vouchers. are like, "No, we want to go home. Yeah, like, we don't want to be." They they, they roll know. they roll the cart out with the cokes and everything. Yeah, right, on. right. Yeah, you're like, this, isn't, this isn't helping at all. And they, they're know. trying their best, but yeah, the yeah. only thing the only yeah. thing they can say right now is, "Hey, we've chartered a jet, right. and we're getting you guys right. yeah, out exactly. here." That's it. Yo, yeah, I understand totally, man. All right, so you and I share uh, something else in common other than mm-hmm. just stand up, and that is, um, you used to be, a, you know, when I first met you, uh, you talked about this a lot on uh, stage, mm-hmm. uh, being a, a teacher. So oh, you yeah. to teach for a while. Yeah, tell <laughs> yeah. me about that. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, well, I went to school for, um, well, before school started, I guess I guess it goes back to when I was like 18, like you graduate high school, and my parents were like, so what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want to be a comedian. And they both kind of like laughed, and they're like, well, why don't you get a backup career just to be safe? You know? Oh, okay. I never really thought, oh, it's just you're funny, and then if you're funny, you're going to have... Yeah. Tonight Show or whatever. Yeah, Not happen. even realizing, like, oh, the first time you sign up for an open mic, there's 40 other people trying to get on. Exactly. And you don't realize how competitive it is. So I went to school for a while and became, a, I was like a substitute teacher mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for probably two years or so yeah. while I was doing stand-up. And then uh, just by the graces of God, I was able to <laughs> kind of have guys kind of grab me and go, hey, let's go here, let's go here. And so yeah. I got to travel a lot and then... Uh, like I said, just kind of snowballed to where it was like, cool, I don't need to teach anymore. Don't I mean, teach, yeah. I still miss it. My wife's a teacher, but it's okay. like, again, there's so many, like, just with the budget cuts and the way kids are now, it's, oh I, I don't God. really, oh you know, God. I really kind of envy people who can kind of stick in there because it's, it's a pretty tough um profession for sure tough, you know? tough field man tough yeah. field like when I when I said I was going to podcast I was like the first thing I got to ask this guy is yeah. in terms <laughs> of uh you know him being a teacher and how was it and does he miss it because I man I, I literally yeah. I was wide eyed and bright eyed and bushy tailed yeah. when I first started oh my god I want to come yeah. I want to change yeah. the kids in the world <laughs> right and I did it for 10 years and I literally was I was about to be on CNN mm-hmm. man when I left yeah. I was like local yeah. man lo- <laughs> right. local man destroys a child <laughs> yeah so I said let me get out out of this, but uh, but you know, I, yeah, it was. It's, I always like doing podcasts because mm-hmm. I learned something different. Uh, you said like at the beginning, like eighteen, you knew you wanted to be a comic. Huh? I did, yeah. Well, just because right. I grew up as a big fan of comics. I mean, I used. To, I remember we got Comedy Central when I was like maybe eighth grade. You know, we got cable, so I was like a okay. big thing. And my parents. They're always like, "Oh, it's probably a lot of dirty stuff, so don't watch Comedy Central." Mm-hmm. So when they left, that's the first thing my first brother and I would turn on. on and but, yeah. but we ended up watching guys like Sinbad, and mm-hmm. I think Jim Gaffigan had a couple of specials, and so yeah. I kind of gravitated towards those guys just because they were funny without really being. It's just my kind of sense of humor, I guess. I kind of like yes. that kind of stuff. But, yes, um, yes. Because I was, yeah. I, I was definitely going to hint on that too. Like I said, I know that you uh, were clean. That's a, uh, mm-hmm. that's a place that I was going to go. Uh, but, to, but, I mean, but I mean, it's not like a contract. I'm not like if I write something, I go, "Oh, it's dirty. I can't use it." Exactly. It's just kind of where my brain kind of goes. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like I said, being married and having kids and being a teacher, it's just those are the things that I kind of think are funny and exactly and stuff that other people find relatable. Yes. So that's kind of the stuff that uh, that I used to do. Are they ready for us or not? Not quite. Oh, I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. No Sounds problem. Good. Not a problem. Not a problem. So yeah, tell me um, about uh, your first time at the, cause when, when I first started. I started at about oh seven. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my first time on stage was the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. Yeah. Still on Liberty Street. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. Met yep. Roger. Yep. Man, yep. didn't best. think I was gonna be able to get on, and he finally comes over to me after about eight people and says, "Hey, you're on you're next." Up. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah. whoa. So it's but, like in right, tap to get ready to pitch, you and, know. 
exactly. like coming out of the bullpen. Exactly. So yeah. right around that uh, time is you know you were like a, a staple, and they like knew Andy B. And so I was just yeah. kind of so I was kind of like, hey man, um, you know, like I just want to know when your first time uh, when you started getting down there at the comedy yeah, show. Yeah, I guess I started maybe like oh six ish. Okay. But I, I but I was taking um, Chili Chalice had a writing class there. There we go. So I would go probably two or three times a week between the open mic and his class and just watching. So mm-hmm. I think. Roger saw that I was kind of serious and at least probably wasn't very good, but at least <laughs> saw like, all right, he, this is what he wants to do. So he was always very nice about getting me stage time. And, you know, that, I always appreciated that, you know. Yeah. And so, um, you know, kind of just took any stage time I could get. And it's a great room. I mean, the old room is, is, I mean, the new room is basically the same as the old one, but it's perfect because they're right on top of you and it's low ceilings. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so like the first time I guess I ever performed there, I guess, was probably during one of his chili's um coaching uh uh graduation classes okay so like you would do like six weeks of just writing material i'm i'm pretty lazy so i always, I always <laughs> used it as like a motivator like all right i gotta crank something else out mm-hmm. so um but it was the same thing you always it was so exciting and great room great crowds there and uh, yeah. i loved it man and rogers like i said very um he's always been very nice and so uh you know, always appreciated the uh, the opportunities over there, man. Yes, he's always been like the the fairest, one of the fairest guys that I've known. Every time we talk about Roger, I always bring that word up because people he's always, just so such a fair guy. Yeah, people always want to move up. I mean, and I get it. Everybody, and I always told people they said like, well, when do you know I'm ready to feature? When do you know I'm ready to MC? When you, like when Roger tells you you're ready, that's when you're ready. Because no, I mean, everybody's got their own their mm-hmm. own. You know, obviously different scales or whatever but yeah. i always felt like roger was pretty honest with hey you need to word. just just change this a little bit or yeah. hey this is something focus on that so i mean he was always good at, you know you, you don't want you never want people to hurt your feelings but obviously he, he was always a guy who watches the show so he was always mm-hmm. able to give pretty constructive like he's like you're not doing bad but this is what you need to do to get to where you want to go and exactly. some guys take it and they go, oh, whatever, he doesn't care. What, what, does, he, what does he know? I always took it as, okay, that's what I need to improve on. Yeah. And so that, those kind of things, I think, eventually make you better in the long run. Yeah, obviously he and has so, the experience, you know, too. Like, you know, he's been sitting here looking at these yeah. shows and, and booking these guys, and he knows what's good. So, yeah. He's seen everybody Honest, and man. everybody yeah. coming up. And yeah. so, yeah, I've, I always appreciated that. Not, not to say that. You know, Mark Ridley or anybody else yeah, isn't. It was just that was my hangout. So Roger was always kind of the guy that I went. All right, that's you know, of course, who I got to listen to. So yeah, they love you over there, man. Like I said, whenever I could oh, come thanks, in man. and I see all the number comedy <laughs> showcase, I'm like, hey, so oh, what is it? Andy Bingo coming through? It's been great. Thank you. So um, tell me now, uh, like a list of uh, comics that you've just kind of been, you know, watching, kind of fanning on. Who are you digging right around now? Yeah. All of this, this is like the 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 uh, the year of the comedy special, man. Yeah. I'm looking up and just like all these Netflix every, comedy every, specials are dropping. Everybody's got one but me. <laughs> it all fun. Hey, you next, definitely. <laughs> You're up there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like Mike Berbiglia still. I, I, okay. I remember I saw him my freshman year of college. He was performing in the cafeteria for like 18 kids. Wow. You know, nobody knew him. And then a year later, he, he was doing Placta, which was two or 3,000 seats. Wow. So, I mean, he blew up like mm-hmm. pretty much, I don't want to say overnight, mm-hmm. but it was like from a year, it was like, wow. And I just always loved his stories. And I feel like, oh, I knew him when, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, That's always kind of watched best. him. But, yeah, he's a guy okay. that I always like watching. And cool. So, Mike. and I out. Yeah. Mike Brubiglia, yes, yes, yes. Now, we uh, hinted on this uh, a little bit earlier, but like you said, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, working clean, you said that's just kind of the stuff that you, you, you write what you know. Mm-hmm. And so, yep, you with the, um, you know, family and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you um, have a problem with, per se, uh, people that uh, don't? Like, is that is that just something that you're like, oh, I don't really no, dig, no. It, dig it that way? Do you, mm-hmm. you, still cons- well, think, you still think you can be funny and, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's guys, I mean, even locally, there's guys that are filthy, and I sit in the back <laughs> and I'm crying, laughing so hard. <laughs> Exactly. It's just, I, and I've said this before, I just look like a teddy bear. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I'm saying something dirty, people are like, oh, like, yeah, you know, exactly. so it just doesn't fit. I understand. So I understand. it's just, yeah. you know, you got to kind of be self aware of, you know, you, got you know, to. I, I do a couple of things and they seem to get pretty big laughs, but it's like mm-hmm. if I, like, that style is just, it just doesn't fit who I am. I so understand. Totally. You just got to find that. It's not that I'm, I find it, um, you know, it's not like I'm a comedy snob and I'm like, oh, he's doing dirty blue stuff. <laughs> like, it's, I think it's hilarious. It's just, yeah, I just, I yeah. can't pull it off. It's so. just a, yeah, I get and it. And like I, I said, the it. guys I grew up watching were like Seinfeld and Gaffigan and those guys who were a little, 
not necessarily as funny, but they they craft every little word and every little moment. So um, yeah, yeah. so yeah, those are the guys that I kind of just kind of gravitate towards, towards and try to write like. You know. Yeah, you mentioned that Sinbad earlier too, yeah. and it's funny that uh, he uh, kind of had one of those uh, you know kind of stages or one of those epiphanies mm-hmm. really where he was you know working clean. Then he said, you know what, man, I don't have to do clean up. Maybe I can get more mm-hmm. if I do dirty. And he did dirty, and everybody was appalled. Right? They were like, oh my god, yeah. is that Sinbad? Right. And he quickly made yeah. the change. Like, no, I got to go back to who yeah, I am. So yeah, I mean, that, that makes a, perfect there's sense. There's more of a market if you're cleaner. There's just more mm-hmm. relatable stuff. But I mean, there's. Like I said, there's guys um, like the late, great Robert Schimmel. I mean, that guy was filthy, but absolutely hilarious. Yes. But if I tried doing that set, <laughs> I would never be able to go on. They'd be like, yeah, you, got, you, can't, you, you can't say that stuff. You gotta, you gotta, you know. I understand. I understand. So, yeah, yeah. So how has um, it been working? I've heard that you've been uh, doing some uh, cruise lines and stuff mm-hmm. like that. How, yeah, how's, how are those working? Um, they're okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they obviously have a reputation of not being... Uh, fantastic, but it's just it's just a lot, you know. It's just like you're doing like twelve or thirteen shows a week, so mm. it's, you're definitely cranking out a lot of shows. Oh, um, okay. I was I've never like no like you mentioned reputation. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. It's mm. it's it's. I want to say lonely, but it's kind of lonely, you know. Mm. And and uh, mm. but the cool thing is, is you definitely get to go to pretty cool location cool you know like spots. the Bahamas or yeah, somewhere going to some cool spots yeah so like I like them um, I mean they definitely have a reputation for being kind of like eh, whatever but mm-hmm. then you kind of go on them and you're like this is awesome there's free food hey, there's free trips so. mountains of food from what yeah. I'm hearing that's all I've ever heard is good things I've never yeah. heard so, yeah so that's so, why I, I figured mean, I would ask it, I, I enjoy it I mean the check is nice so and I mean, then of course you're nothing, getting paid yeah, yeah nothing wrong with that yeah, nothing so. wrong with that great yeah. well hey man I appreciate you so yeah. much for uh, allowing me the time my uh, pleasure. Right. Once I uh, saw that you were uh, going to be in town today, I was yeah. like, hmm, I'm wondering <laughs> if there's any way I can get some time. <laughs> Absolutely, and man. And then we put this uh, podcast yeah. together, man. It's always um, good to see you, man. Yes, definitely, yeah. definitely. What are you uh, up to next? What's the uh, – uh, Luckily, just kind of working locally. I don't have to drive after that big thing. <laughs> yes, I can yes. Just working uh, – You've done enough for sure driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, got a couple, I think, five, six weeks in a row or something where I'm, I'm just doing the kind of local, you know, Royal Oak and okay. a couple of private things and stuff. So uh, so home for a while and uh, nothing better than sleeping in your own bed after you've been on the road for a while. Ooh, nothing else. I mean, you know, too, man, traveling. Yes, it's just, traveling. It takes yes. a toll on you for a while. Yes, so. indeed. Yeah. So, yep, you can hang with the little ones and you don't have to worry yep. about the airport. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> You're good. Man. You're good. Yep, All right, sure. Andy, well, thanks so much, hey, man, for joining pleasure, the Comedy Chatter Podcast. Hey, I'll let you know when this thing drops, man. Hopefully Please you do. can kind of tell yeah. some of your folks to check it Absolutely, out. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Thanks so much for checking out the pod this go round. A very special thanks to my guest, Andy Beningo. You can check out his website, andybeningo.com, for future show dates and appearances. Check out the next episode of the Comedy Channel Podcast with another nationally touring comic, and of course, me, Melvin Williams. Make sure y'all listen, subscribe, and support. Y'all be good to yourselves and each other. Take care. <laughs>